pretty impressive, isn't it? These old walls have been there a long time. But just what was it? You may have passed these uh, many times as you've been in the Alberta Village Park, not knowing just what this represents. These walls are the last remnants of the Frankfurt Iron Works. It was an iron smelter uh, that existed between 1870 and 1883 to make iron ore into ingots uh, by casting process and shipped out down the lakes. There was a lot here. This was just a small part of the complex of buildings, foundry, uh, wood yards, and we've, uh, we can show you what it looked like, uh, how it operated. If you follow me into the past, we'll do that. The location on the south side of Betsy Bay was made possible by the dredging and stabilization of a new harbor entrance into the bay by the U.S. Corps of Engineers in 1867. This created an ideal situation to bring in by ship iron ore and limestone from Escanaba, unload it directly in front of the facility, and load the ingots back onto ships bound for manufacturing facilities in Detroit and Buffalo. The company was formed in Detroit in 1869, a board of directors and officers chosen, and capitalized for a princely sum of $200,000. Contracts were let for the construction of the buildings, machinery to be shipped in, and wood cutting. The buildings consisted of a top house containing the boiler and engine, a crusher for the ore and limestone, and a platform, and a casting house containing the inglet molds. In between was the massive steel stack where the iron was smelted. The first day of operation was July 1, 1870, when the runoff produced 15 tons of iron ingots. The importance of this manufacturing operation as the main economic driver in the early development of Benzie County can't be overemphasized. The contracts for wood cutting alone dispersed $45,000 into the local economy. About 50 men were employed at good wages in the smelter and yards. There was also a Laker crew who ran the two steam-powered barges, the Fayette and the Pentland, delivering the ore and limestone from Escanaba. The ingots were carried the short distance from casting house to shipping dock by horse-drawn carts on rails, where it was loaded onto ships bound for the Detroit Stove Works, among other purchasers. One of the most difficult and perplexing tasks in the operation was the movement of vast quantities of hardwood logs from forest to wood yard where they were used to make charcoal in the kilns. 15,000 cords of wood per year were required at peak production. Horses were used, over 20 teams being owned by the furnace itself, plus contracting many more from farmers in the winter when they were idle. The ultimate solution was a steam-powered locomotive, actually a steam engine in a boxcar with a chain drive to the wheels, built by Robert Blacklock in his machine shop in South Frankfurt in 1872. This towed a string of flat cars along an ever-lengthening railroad reaching north of present 115, just west of the airport. The ironworks brought a large contingent of new citizens to the area from around the world, including Superintendent Thomas Anderson and the Blacklock Brothers, names that were prominent in the later development of South Frankfurt. Edward Gaithels, an original employee who carried the first piece of pig iron to the dock said working here was like working in the Tower of Babel since there were workers from 13 different nations. He remembered working one day with seven men who were all of different nationalities and couldn't understand a word that each other said and worked by signs. By 1883, the wood within a reasonable distance that was uh, suitable for charcoal was exhausted. 
and the iron smelting techniques had changed and improved such that this facility was no longer profitable to run at uh, the end of the Great Lakes shipping season in 1883 the fires were doused for the final time and the facility abandoned. People scattered to other jobs in the area, some to the sawmills around the bay, some out of town. And there were a few sporadic attempts in the next few years to restart the facility with local bonding issues but none of it ever went anywhere. And the facility was unused in the, uh, as well as the property until the Toledo and Ann Arbor Railroad showed up in 1892. But that's another story for another day. I'll look forward to seeing you then. Until then, stay safe and remember, history matters. <laughs>